It's the Arch Advocate Show. It's Friday. Good Lord, that went quick. Happy Friday to everybody. I hope you have a good weekend this week. Uh, as predicted, boy, I got, uh, got a big response out of yesterday's show. Listen, man, if you don't, if you don't want to be called out on, on lying, don't lie. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it's actually pretty simple. Got a lot of emails and private messages and hate, 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 hate. And one thing I noticed is this. Uh, you, you know, the, the social media has created a new form of depression uh, in Western civilization. And the reason being is because, uh, ironically, right, this is like a, a case of irony, is that even though we are more connected now because of social media, Right. Never before have you been able to talk with a friend on the other side of the planet in real time in a face to face conversation like that. We've never had this before. You've never been able to find out as much stuff as quickly as you can right now. So we are more connected than ever before in human history. And yet. Personal relationships are um, gravely suffering. And this is coming from uh, the former. Uh, what's the uh, um, Surgeon General of the United States? Uh, he was on Tucker, Tucker Carlson recently talking about it, and he was saying, "Like, look, man, this is." He said, "It's bizarre. It's weird how how disconnected people are from just one another. Personal relationships are down." And he he went on to say, "Like, he you know he kind of caught a whiff of that, and then he actually did like an in depth study, and he's like, yeah, man, people are very very disconnected." And because of that, like, there's still that need to reach out and, and you know, uh, you know, connect with somebody else's mind. But because there's, because you don't have any friends, you don't have people you can talk to, the, the quickest way to get that sort of um, chemical reaction that you get when interacting with other people is to reach out to strangers and, and just be an asshole, right? And that's what you see on social media now now it's certainly a problem on the left you know if you want to have a good crack up sometime go on to go on to youtube i'm not, i'm sorry well youtube too but go on to facebook go on to the young turks page and just open up the comment section and you just see the weirdest things being said it's really i mean it's a treat uh I personally have to stop doing that because I, I find myself getting all wound up like oh my god these people are so stupid i can't believe it this is, you know, something that happens in the world in real time. But it's not just leftists. It's everybody, right? Everybody's feeling disconnected. People want, you go on to Reddit and there's, uh, you know, the Donald page and, and uh, the Great Awakening page and, you know, all these conservative pages. And if you put anything up there, people are, are just going to volunteer to give, give you their shitty thoughts. It's weird, Right. I don't personally care. Like I, you know, I'm the kind of person like if you talk crap to me, I'm going to fuel it, right? I'm going to keep you going, right? I'm going to see how long, how much stamina you have to keep venting, right? Because it's 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 always not very long. It's two or three comments, and then you know I let them burn themselves out. But this is this is this is why I advocate community so much. Like you have to talk to people, you have to be involved with other people. Right, you have to care about uh, other people. Like, if you have a family, like that's great. But just keep in mind that, like, you're you're sort of insulated in that. It's like, like you need to have friends. You need to have friends to go bowling with, or hunting, or fishing, or just to hang out and have coffee with. Like, you have to talk to people, man. You'll go crazy. And and this this lunacy that's happening because of the disconnect in communities, because of social media, like the cure to that is talking with other people and uh, sort of uh, soliciting their thoughts, right? Like, don't just show up and blurt out all of your weird, you know, theories. Let other people talk. You know what I mean? Give them space and to, to explain themselves. That's how, you, that's how you get connected. That's why I talk to people, you know, like uh, my friend Sam, who, uh, like, he says the most insane dribble all the time. He's coming on the show again this weekend. I think, I don't know, it depends on how busy I am this weekend, but like I let him talk because it's like, well, I, you know, I have to be able to allow other people who I think talk nonsense, like I have to, I have to be able to hear them out. 
or else I'll get out of practice. And then I'll start being short with people and then nothing happens. You know what I mean? No, the minds don't change. You know what I mean? If we, if we shut other people off or shut other people down, nobody's going to change. Uh, you know, I'm not going to grow as a man. That person is going to keep thinking whatever weird thoughts that, that they think. Right? And what if I'm the one with the weird thoughts? You know, what if I'm the asshole? I'm never going to know unless I get other people with other points of views to come talk to me and, uh, you know, tell me their bogus theories. So that's, you know, that, that, that's one thing. If you're new to this show, like, come on to archadvocate.com, arch-advocate.com. Go down to the very bottom and there's all the, all the social media links to the show, all right? There's my Twitter page and then there's the, the group's uh, Telegram page and you can talk with all of us and, you know, live, it's, it's great. Like, we've got a lot of people that just come and hang out sometimes. Um, but mostly we talk about cryptocurrencies or politics or how funny it is that people keep showing up on my page to try to porno uh, promote pornography for some reason. Get involved in community. It's vital to the human experience. It's like, it's like your diet, right? You can't just be eating cheeseburgers all the time, man. You'll die, right? You got to mix in some fruits and vegetables uh, from time to time. Now listen, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Now listen, I'm a pretty open-minded kind of guy, right? Like I always, you know, if I'm talking with Catholics or if I'm talking with Jehovah's Witnesses or if I'm talking with Muslims or Sikhs or Hindus or whatever, you know, I always try to find out, like, not uh, what do I disagree with, you know, with, with this person. I always try to find, like, what do we agree about, you know? Like, uh, you know, in the case of uh, Miss, Miss Cortez... It's like, you know, everybody that's that's uh, conservative thinks she's a kook, right? And by the way, you're right. And everybody on the left thinks she's like the, the savior. But what we can all agree on, right? Left and right, conservative and liberal, what we can all agree on is that this woman is an absolute godsend. <laughs> she's the gift that keeps on giving, folks. Like, she says the most retarded things. You know what I mean? And I mean retarded in the dictionary sense of that word, right? By the way, I'm taking that word back. Leftists, you can't have that anymore. Political correctness, you can't have that, all right? The word retarded, it has a meaning, right? And it means uh, like bent out of shape to such a degree that it's of, it's of no more use. You know what I mean? Like if you put a uh, flame retardant on something, it means that it makes flames of no use, right? It won't work. And it's like, if you're, when I call somebody retarded, I mean, it's like, man, you're so, you're so bent out of shape that you're, you're of no use anymore. This woman says the most retarded things. Oh, I, you know, the unemployment numbers are so low it, because everybody's working two jobs. As if the unemployment numbers was based on how many jobs were available versus how many jobs were taken. That's not where we get the unemployment numbers from, dumb dumb. You know? Now look, in the dimension uh, in the universe where I come from, people like this don't stand a chance because they're retarded. Right? And everybody sees it and says, okay, I'm not going to vote for that person, even though I like her and I like the party that she represents and she's kind of cute and everything. I still, I'm not going to vote for her because she's dumb. She was a bartender until she was 28 years old, right? A bartender, which is like two notches above being a stripper, right? Like that's what she was until she was 28, right? The way that it's supposed to go if you don't join the military is you're supposed to get like a job working fast food and then you go to college, right? Then you turn 21, then you become a bartender so that you can pay for the rest of your undergraduate and perhaps graduate degree and then once you're out of college you're not supposed to be a bartender anymore just like you're not supposed to see anybody at mcdonald's working that's over the age of 18 you know what i mean it's like man you're too old this job this is a starter job right it's like it's it's like being a stripper you're a 28 year old bartender and now you're running for congress and now you're up there saying complete random just 
uh, why is it that we don't take into account the cost of, of, uh, of funerals in medical care? It's like, what? Wow. You mean so, you know, like, you want free health care for everybody. You also want uh, free burial for everybody? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, everybody's going to die. Not everybody's going to get sick. But everybody's going to die. Eventually. And she's talking, it's just, it's bizarre. Right? Now, you may, if you are a conservative like me, you may take comfort in that fact. Right? You may think to yourself, surely nobody is going to vote for that idiot. Right? Ah, but you would be wrong. This is why you must vote. Now again, Derek, got my eye on you. I know that some of you don't want to vote. All right? But again, if you do not vote, you are, it's, you're, you're still voting. Right? You're giving your vote to, to somebody else. You are giving your vote to your opponent. That's, that's, uh, that's not the move, man. You have to vote. Right? You have to vote. Can you imagine, in, is it, was there any other period in American history where it was more important to vote than this? It's important, uh, one, because now there's 340 million of us. We have to vote, right? The, what I was going to say is, look, you can make that assumption like, oh, she's so dumb. Surely nobody's going to vote for her. Oh, well, I, I, I would uh, submit to you Nancy Pelosi, right? She says crazy stuff all the time. She was the lady who, you know, when Obama was trying to strong arm his Affordable Health Care Act, uh, which was neither uh, affordable nor provided health care, uh, when they were trying to cram that down the throat of the American people, she's the one who came out on TV and said, well, if you want to read what's in it, you're just going to have to sign it into law. Like, what? Okay, that lady that said something that dumb, Right? I can, oh, listen, I, I can give you the hits now. All right? I can give you a whole list of crazy, bizarre, batshit things that she said. Right? You, you've heard them. You, you've heard of the things that she said. And guess what? She is still the face of the Democratic Party. That wrinkly old Kentucky Fried Chicken Colonel Sanders original recipe skin with her kooky eyes. <laughs> Going on talking about, uh, oh, doesn't Donald Trump understand these MS-13 gang members had the spark of divinity? The spark of divinity. She was talking about MS-13 members. She said that on television, right? In front of everybody. You would, say, you would think like, okay, well, surely her career is done. No, contrary to that. That lady used to be the speaker of the house people recently. All right, she was third in line to be president of the United States, right? If Barack Obama and Joe Biden had both simultaneously died of a heart attack, Nancy Pelosi would have been the ruler of the free world. Think about that, that lady. Okay, so if you don't think it's important to vote, if you think that everybody is reasonable, right? Everybody's just walking around making a bunch of sense and doing the right thing and, and whatever, and therefore, you know, Ms. Cortez has absolutely no shot at becoming a congressperson. You're wrong. There's a lady down in Florida that dresses up like a clown. Big red hat, lots of makeup, poofy clothes, rhinestones, the whole thing. She's, she dresses up like a clown. She's a congressperson, right? There's a, there's a, you know, Captain Caveman from San Antonio. Like that guy is a congressman. You think, you're, you think you're living in a world where everybody just makes sense? Yeah, that's not the world we're in, right? That's where I come from. I don't know how I got here, but the, in the dimension where I come from, none of this stuff is happening. None of this stuff would ever be allowed to happen. Because where I come from, things make sense. Evidently, in this dimension that we're in right now, uh, nothing makes sense and everybody's okay with it, Right? <laughs> So, uh, Alexandria Cortez, like, I, it, this is really funny because it, it would seem to me that the only thing that any Republican would have to do is just make a, just make a promotional video of just her gems that she drops and then comes in at the end and says, like, this is who the Democrats are now. This is who the Democrats are now. You want to vote for that? 
right? You've got Nancy Pelosi is the head of the Democratic Party. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is the face of the Democratic Party. And then you've got the legs of the Democratic Party are, are people like Jerry Brown in California. And Gavin Nunes, or uh, I'm sorry, Gavin, uh, is it Newsom? Uh, Gavin, whatever, the, the uh, mayor of, of San Francisco, right? Those are the legs of the Democratic Party. You want to know why California is burning down right now? Out of control? Right? And this is far from over, people. That fire, like, that's, that's, you're getting into spiritual territory when your entire state is on fire. Right? And, and one of the main reasons why that state, is, that, that state is so badly on fire right now is because of Democrats' policy as it, as it applies to water in the state of California. And I could qualify that statement, by the way, and it would take me a couple hours, but it would make perfect sense. There's in, 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 On the Crypto Currently show, I talked about it a, a couple of times, I think, but look, that's who those people are. They just want more money so that they can pay for more people to be in this country illegally. Because in California, it's like 20 million, right? Actually, it's more than that, but it's 20 million. Because you see, the way it works is de depending on how many people are, uh, you know, live in your city or live in your district, regardless of their uh, citizenship status, you get more representation in the federal government. It's based on headcount, not by who's here legally and who here, who, who's here illegally. The reason they're bringing in so many illegals is because the more people you have, the more power you have to represent. That's what's going on. And because, Cali because California politicians are more uh, concerned with uh, remaining in power than they are using the power that they've been given, California is now burning down. And yes... That's not a conspiracy theory. Like I, well, I guess it sort of is, but I can, I can qualify that statement. So you have to vote, people, because Alexandria Ocasio Cortez actually probably still has a very good shot. There's still people that are like, yeah, I don't, I know she says stupid things, but I'm going to vote for her anyways. Why? Uh, she's pretty. I want to have sex with her. All right. That's, that's, that's where we're at. People are going crazy and. Oh, there doesn't seem to be any end in sight. Gab AI, people. We've talked about Gab AI a number of times. Excuse me. Gab AI and your free speech. Your free speech is under attack, folks. I'll give you a perfect example. Now, who's the most famous conspiracy theorist alive right now? Right? Is it uh, that Greek dude from the History Channel who's always talking about aliens? No! Actually, he's got the coolest job uh, in the world. I'm, I'm fairly certain of that, that I could prove that mathematically. The biggest conspiracy theorist in the world is Alex Jones. Without a doubt, right? Hands down. Now again, I love me cons some conspiracy theory. Think about this, right? Alex Jones is the biggest conspiracy theorist on the planet. So what do you do with that? <laughs> well, how about we get... The, the biggest information trafficking uh, organization in the world, Google, and take the biggest podcast and uh, you know video platforms in the world, YouTube and Spotify and iTunes. Why don't we get the, the biggest monopolies that have uh, ever existed in American culture because we have anti-monopoly laws? Why don't we get the biggest monopoly holders in the world that are also American companies and get them to shut them down. How much like it, so you're going to you're going to you're going to do the very thing that the conspiracy theorist has been saying was coming for all these years. You're going to you're just going to do that. You're going to tell everybody who listens to the conspiracy theorist that the conspiracy theorist was absolutely right the entire time. That's what we're up against, folks. Right? I mean, think about that. Right? You're Google. You're the biggest company in the world. Well, I think I think McDonald's is actually still the biggest company in the world. But you know, you're the biggest in, you know, tech company in the world, and you're going to shut down Alex Jones. Right? The conspiracy theorist who says Google is coming to get you, and then so Google comes and gets him. 
It says, oh, you know, can't have this kook. He's a liar. Can't have this liar around. It's like, you mean the liar who was saying that you were coming to get him and that you're coming to get all of this? Good move, Google. So Microsoft makes a move. And I want to talk about this because this is, this is very important. All right. Keep in mind, Microsoft has been sued for antitrust before, and I believe they lost. Um, Microsoft demands violent threats be removed from Gab AI. Uh, Neo-Nazi complies. Okay, so what happened was is one of the Gab AI users is uh, like an actual neo-Nazi, like somebody who talks about they want to, you know, uh, murder the Jews and all that sort of thing, right? So Amazon, or, uh, Microsoft Azure goes to Gab AI and they say, listen, you have to take that guy down. Gab AI, I, Gab AI says, I don't, we don't have to do anything. We don't have to do anything. Like this is, this is, this is an open forum and people, you know, if they want to come on here, they can say whatever they want. Like that's, we're, we're not here to monitor people, right? Now look, you can have all kinds of issues with that. I do, you know, I have questions about that. Some neo-Nazi, like there are actually like neo-Nazis out there. They're very few and they usually have missing teeth and they're on meth. But this guy's out here talking about, you know, on Gabby A, he's talking about putting, you know, torturing the Jews to death, right? That, that, that's a bad thing. But it's not Gab AI's uh, uh, position to, to um, punish that person, right? It is Gab AI's responsibility to, if there's been a crime committed, right? Because, listen, we have freedom of speech. We do not have the freedom of speech as it applies to threatening other people. That's not, that, that's a crime. You can't threaten other people's lives. You cannot put other people's lives in danger. You cannot, you cannot stir up a crowd and then say, let's go kill this particular person. That's against the law. And for good reason, right? But Gab AI is not a law firm, nor are they a police agency, right? If I see something on Twitter or on Facebook or anything else, if I see people that are, that are actually calling for violence, then it's my responsibility to call the authorities and say, hey, look, this person is calling for other people to be violent or this person is saying that they are going to be violent towards other people and then it's then it's my responsibility however it's not my responsibility to tell that person like you, you know uh you can't be here anymore and then shut them off that's the, we have a structure in our society where we have a department of people that that that's their job and they're called the police or the marshals or the fbi or whoever right in an ordered society, that's how it works. So here comes Microsoft Azure. That's who Gab AI runs their platform off of, right? Microsoft, ever heard of them? It's this little company in uh, uh, Seattle. So Microsoft comes in and they say, they say, look, says Microsoft took one of its few actions to restrict unsafe speech Oh boy. By demanding the microblogging service Gab AI remove two posts by a neo Nazi that threatened violence. All right. Gab is known for uh, an expansive, some say extreme, attitude towards permitting all forms of speech without moderation. Gab relies on Microsoft Azure, a popular cloud service offering to provide the servers and networking behind the service. Microsoft told Gab that it uh, received complaints about malicious activity related to two messages posted by Patrick Little, an avowed neo-Nazi, that advocated directly for violence against Jews. Microsoft gave the company two days to remove them or risk suspension. Okay, now here's the thing. We're going to be seeing this, this battle for the freedom of speech, all right? It's not an ethereal thing. That freedom of speech thing, though it is from God, it's actually also written into our law. In fact, it's the first one, right? The First Amendment is the freedom of speech. It's law. We have lawyers, we have judges, we have this whole system, we have precedent, right? There's been many, 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 many rulings 
on what is or is not the First Amendment in the United States. Right? This is this is we are not in any sort of ethereal sort of esoteric uh, ground here. This is rock solid stuff, right? And moving forward, because the 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 question in the the silencing of Alex Jones and shadow banning, you know, Republican congressmen and women and that sort of thing, that the, the question has been so far, well, what can we do? What are you gonna do to Jack at Twitter? Or what are you gonna do to Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook? What are you gonna do? Huh? They're private companies. They can do whatever the hell they want. Ah, aha. Well, the problem with that is that one, this is virgin territory, right? We never had Microsoft and Google and Facebook and you know YouTube. We never had that up until about you know 25 years ago. We never had any of this stuff. I mean, Microsoft's a little bit older, but you know what I, you know you know what I'm saying. Like this is all brand new stuff. It's brand new turf, and so you know the law has to evolve in these cases. And so the 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 law in this case is going to you're going to see people like Microsoft and Google and everybody else getting getting sued by Alex Jones and by Gab AI and by everybody else. And by the way, if once they start um, putting together legal funds for that, I'm going to start pitching that to you guys. So if you want to give money to, you know, whoever, Jay Sekulow or whoever it is that would, that would be, you know, spearheading that fight, that's a fight we need to have. Because the, the problem here is, is it comes down to the issue of are you a public utility, right? Which has not been, it's, that's just not been judged on yet. Why? Because it's so new it hasn't come up yet. But it's going to come up. You have to think about this, right? Gab AI says, yeah, this guy is one of our users, right? He uses our service and he says horrible things that we all object to, but I'm not the one that's going to, I, I'm not going to terminate his service. And you could say, well, wait a minute, isn't it their so, sort of social contract responsibility? Well, think about it like this, right? Your electric company. Right? Like in San Diego, the electric company is called SDG&E, right? San Diego Gas and Electric. And they're owned by somebody, and that thing is owned by somebody else, and that thing's probably owned by, you know, GE. Who knows, right? But ultimately, they are private companies that are publicly traded. Private companies, right? They're not, it's not, you know, uh, the Department of Energy that sends people in San Diego their electric bill. Wherever you live, when you get your electric bill, it does not come from the Department of Energy. It is not, you do not get your electricity from the federal government. You get it from a privately owned company that is most likely traded publicly, right? It's the free market. So think, stay with me here. I know this is kind of boring, but follow, follow me here, right? If you decided that you wanted to set up a grow room in your basement or your attic or your whole house, right? You wanted to put up all kinds of growing lights so that you could grow weed and become a millionaire from selling weed, which isn't terribly hard to do. Um, if you did that, all of a sudden you would be drawing down a whole bunch of more electricity than the average user, right? And the electric company would see that. Now, the federal government has uh, an arrangement with the electric companies and they get you know the government goes to them like the the uh, 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 what's the, the DEA right they they go to all the major power companies and they say they say look you can't tell us uh, you know if somebody's using too much electricity and um, you, can, you know you, you can't tell us how much electricity they're using you can't, you know, you can't speculate as to what it is they're using it for. What we would ask, though, is that if you see something that looks out of the ordinary, if you would just let us know, right? So that's what happens. If they see somebody using an extraordinary amount of electricity uh, compared to everybody else who lives in that neighborhood, they're going to call the police and they're going to say, look, this one address 
They're using a lot of electricity. You may want to check them out. That's how that works, right? But there's no violation there because they're, you know, they're, they're not saying like, well, this person's growing marijuana. They're just saying like, this person's using a lot of damn electricity. Something's going on there. You may want to look into it. But the electric company is not a police uh, organization. They are not a law organization. They are not part of the judicial branch. So although they can call the police or they can call the DEA or the marshals or whoever it is that they call, they, they can do that. That is well within their rights to do that. What they cannot do, however, is cut you off. Right? They can't cut you off. They can cut you off if you stop paying your bill. That's different. Right? But they can't just cut you off because they decide like, well, we don't like the amount of electricity that you're using. We don't like that. You ought to be using the same amount of electricity as all of your neighbors. Because you live in a in tract housing. Right? There's 300 houses in your neighborhood and there's an average of, you know, some people got five kids, some people got one kid. There's an average. There's 300 of you. And you, sir, are 15 times the average, right? Something's going on. They can't just turn off your, your service. Why? Because that doesn't fall into the purview of a public utility. You, you see what I'm saying? We, when you have Microsoft in a business arrangement with Gab AI, who I'm assuming pays them money, right? It's not within their purview to go to Gab AI and say, listen, we don't like what's going on on your service, right? There is, we believe that the law is being broken and therefore we are going to enforce the law. It's like, hey, Microsoft, you're not, you're not the cops. You're not a lawyer. You're not a, you're not a legal organization. You're not, a, you know what I mean? You're not part of, of the judiciary. It's not your call. If you think the law is being broken, you need to call the people who are responsible to act when you, when you believe the law is being broken. I could go all nuts on the fact that, like, so you have a problem with this neo-Nazi saying anti-Semitic things, but not with Louis Farrakhan? Hmm. But I digress. Like, there, I don't even need to get into that. I don't, need to, I don't even need to get into the hypocrisy of it. All we need to do is focus on the law, right? And when you are that powerful, like you go to San Diego, it's SDG&E. And if you don't want that, then you can go spend, you can call up my boy Derek. Say, Derek, will you come down to San Diego and will you put a bunch of solar panels on my house? And Derek will say, yes, that'll be $20,000 or whatever it costs, right? You either get your electricity from... Uh, you know, San Diego Gas and Electric, or you get it from God. But either way, you know what I mean? You don't have a lot of choices. That's what a monopoly is, right? And this, this is the problem, is that there is no other Microsoft. There's no equivalent to Microsoft, right? And if, you, if there was an equivalent to Microsoft and, and Gab AI tries to move over there and they say, no, we don't want your kind around here, that's called blacklisting, which is also against the law. And I believe that law is under the antitrust laws. You can't blacklist people. So either way, this, this whole fight for the freedom of speech thing, it's going to get very interesting. And thank God that we are a nation of laws and that we have this template, this constitution, right? A way of life. Now, again, you would think that this would be a no-brainer. Right, that the that lawyers could sue, and then you know lawyers could get in there, and then federal judges could could get in there, and they could say, no, Microsoft, you are abusing your power. This is not within your purview. If you think that the, uh, the the freedom of speech law has been broken because somebody is calling for actual you know violence, then you need to contact the authorities. You don't need to you know try to be a lawyer or a policeman, right? You have a responsibility as a citizen, but that responsibility is not judge and jury and executioner in this case, right? It's not your job. 
Now, you would think that that would be a no-brainer, that that's, you know, that it would be an inexpensive court case and that it would be over very quickly. But, got some better news for you. Not really, it's, it's not actually better news, it's horrible news. Uh, Eric Canton, Canton or Clanton? The bike lock basher guy, all right? Have you seen the video? Did you go on to YouTube or see it on Facebook or Twitter or whatever? Did you see the bike lock attack by Eric Canton, Clanton, whatever? Smack that guy in the head with a bike lock on a chain. That, that man who got hit in the head with that bike lock is very fortunate to still be alive. That was a deadly blow. But it, it must have caught him just right because it didn't kill him. It screwed him up pretty good. But that is... Attempted murder. And the last time I checked, attempted murder was a felony. But, you know, I used to think murder was a felony, too, but uh, didn't seem to be the case for OJ, did it? Right? Like uh, Norm MacDonald, hey, everybody, in California, uh, murder. Now legal. <laughs> in California, Eric Canton got let off yesterday or the day before with a misdemeanor. A misdemeanor assault, right? It's, I didn't know that there was such a thing. I always believed that assault was always a felony. Except in the case of uh, what's called mutual combat. And that's where two guys are in a bar and they had too much to drink and they get in a fist fight. And then the cops show up and they both relax, right? I have a friend, a good friend, good friend, my buddy Chris. He went to prison for a year and a half for uh, pushing a security guard. Pushing. I think he pushed him to the ground, but he was okay. He went to prison for a year and a half for that. No bike locks, no weapon, no knife, no hammer, no baseball bat, just his, just his body. He pushed him, got caught, and went to prison. In California, right? This guy, Eric Canton, this is important because now there is what's called precedent, right? A precedent is like the high water mark. It's like, this is where we're at. Whenever something happens, it's like from now on, the legal community, like if, this, if, if some other person goes out and smacks somebody on the head with a bike lock in California, when that person goes to court... Right? Their attorney can now go in and say, well, in the case of Eric Canton, the judge said this was just a misdemeanor. And so that judge is going to have to think about that by law because that's how our legal system works. Eric Canton tried to murder a guy and he got let off for a misdemeanor assault charge. Misdemeanor assault, again... I said it just five seconds ago. I have to say it again so I can hear myself say it. I didn't even know that that was a thing that existed in the world. A misdemeanor assault. You know what I mean? Like, a misdemeanor assault. That's kind of like, I, I can't even think of, uh, it, 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 you know what I mean? It, it would be like... Um, I'm trying to think of an analogy where it would be like, you know, two words that don't belong right next to each other, like uh, sober drunk driving. You know what I mean? I don't know. I can't, I can't even come up with it. I'm, I'm a little tired. Last night was kind of rough, but um, misdemeanor assault. So that's, that's where we are, people. That's what's going down. That's what's happening in our civilization. And so if you don't think that that's important to you, if you're just like, why are you talking about this? What does this have to do with me? Okay, well, what that means is that like, not only are judges going to have to consider that in California courts from now on, but every Antifa terrorist out there just saw that as well. And how would you interpret that if you saw that? If you were like an Antifa guy, how would you interpret that news? You would interpret that news as, as being, well, the courts obviously side with us. And if we perpetuate violence on people, the courts will side with us. Would you not? Would you not interpret it that way? More reason to arm yourselves, people. Use your Second Amendment. Call your congressman, call your senator, and tell them. 
right? Even if you're in California, you want to see uh, your Second Amendment rights uninfringed because now you're in danger, particularly if you're in California. You're in danger. You're surrounded by people who don't have any problem smashing you on the head with a bike lock because you believe in Jesus and you love your country. You're up against people who will attack the elderly who are in wheelchairs. That's who you're up against. You're up against people who, who believe that MS-13 gang members are just a bunch of hardworking young kids who have after-school jobs. And what, Did you see that Vox piece? Again, like yesterday? So Vox just did this whole piece on like, oh, these MS-13 kids, man, they're just, they're just kids. They have after-school jobs, man. They go to school. It's like, what? Why are you being an apologist for these people? It, we're in, it, we are in insane times. Again, I don't know how I arrived in your dimension, but I'm here. Here I am. Right? Where I come from, this none of this stuff this this would make everybody cause the world to stop spinning until it was fixed. What are you talking about, Vox? But that's where we're at. We now have judges and the county prosecutor, right? They're in Berkeley. Saying, oh, let's let this guy who attempted to murder another guy, let's let him off on a misdemeanor. The time served, right? The jail time, the two nights or whatever, however long he spent in jail. Time served. That's where we're at. And if you don't think that that, that ruling puts your life in danger, well, then one of us is crazy, right? Could be me. I'm not going not gonna to lie. Terrorist training camp in New Mexico. Let's talk about this for a second. There was, a, uh, there was a man who was training children to be a school shooter in New Mexico. Now, if you watch CNN or MSNBC or uh, anybody, pretty much anybody other than Fox, if you, if you watch this in the news, that's all you're going to hear. Some guy was in New Mexico teaching teenagers to be a school shooter. Sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? Well, it's actually much, much worse. Uh, number one, uh, the person who did that is a radical Muslim who there is plenty of audio of him saying in front of all of his Muslim uh, followers like, hey, America sucks and we need, to, we need to tear this down in the name of our God, right? That's what was going on, right? The, the reason why the media is not pointing out this man's religion, his religious beliefs, his political affiliations is because it doesn't fit their narrative. And what narrative could that be? Why would you why would you keep that bit of information out? This guy, uh, his father was a keynote speaker at a uh, Obama uh, DNC meeting. Right? Why would you leave that out? Why would you leave out who this who this man's father was? He was also, he had ties to the World Trade Center bombing, uh, the one in the early 90s, the one during the uh, Clinton administration. Why did they Why did they leave that out? Like, why would why, what purpose would the media have for leaving out those very important details? Right? Oh, because we don't want to be seen as, as Islamophobic. It's not a Islamophobic. It's facts. These are the facts. This is what happened. Here's who this guy was. This is who his father was. This is their relationship to the leader of the free world at one point, Barack Obama. I'm just going to leave all that stuff out again. Just like I was saying yesterday, man, like you, you have to do your, you have to keep your eyes open. You can't believe everything that everybody's telling you. For everybody who wrote in and pissed and moaned and, you know, you know, you got all butthurt over what I said about Q yesterday. Well, okay, fine. Uh, you don't like it? Fine. You are welcome to come on the show. I've said that. How many times have I said that? You want to be on the show? You write me an email. You can come on the show. If you have an argument, I'll love to hear it. Right? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. 
But I'll tell you what I'm not wrong about is, you know, verify. You can trust. Trust is good. You should exercise your trust. Believe everything that they tell you. Trust CNN. Trust, you know, Vox. Trust, you know, Q Anonymous. Trust it all. But verify. Trust. If you want to trust, like, trust is a beautiful thing. It should be exercised. It should be tried out on just about everything. Right? I mean, don't... uh, uh, don't trust uh, sushi that's being sold in a gas station. But you know what I mean? Like, trust, if you, if you want to listen to Vox, if you want to listen to CNN, if you want to listen to the Young Turks, fine, trust. Trust it. But verify. Right? When you see other pieces of information coming out, it's like, here you go, CNN. Like, here, oh, there's this uh, guy that was training young kids to be a school shooter, and there was also a the dead body of a kid found on his compound. Isn't this horrible? This guy's training kids to be a school shooter. Yeah, that's horrible. Is there anything else to the story? Because the next day when I find out that, like, not only was this guy a Muslim, he was a prominent Muslim who hates America and was very outspoken about it and wants to see the the destruction of the United States. You take that and you couple it with the fact that he's training kids to kill other kids... That becomes a whole new story. Everything about that original story has now changed. Now we have verification that there are foreign enemy training camps in our land. It, it, that's a huge, that's a huge, let me put it to you this way. What could, what could that possibly cause? Right, so you're li- you're a you're a guy that's got a ranch in New Mexico, right? And this guy lives a couple hundred miles from you, so it's really no big deal. But you're a guy that's you're in New Mexico, you're minding your own business, raising horses and raising kids, and you know doing your life. And you find out that this is going on, you start asking yourself questions like, well, where were the police? Where was the FBI? Where was the CIA? Where was Big Brother now? Oh, I guess they were too busy you know, going after uh, Julian Assange. or Maybe they were too busy wiretapping the president. You can wiretap the president and come up with this fake dossier that Hillary Clinton paid for, and, we gotta, and the whole nation has to pay attention to that, and meanwhile, this is going on? Well, evidently, my, my uh, police and my legal system is failing me. This is going on in my land, I guess I'm going to have to call my friends and form a militia. And then we will be the, the long arm of the law. Right? You know what that, that's what that means. To keep and bear arms and form a militia. That means, and by the way, there is much precedent for this. That's what that actually means. It means if you gather together with your friends and say, look, we're going to be militia now. Things are out of control. We're going to make our stand. In fact, it just happened uh, once again. Those those cowboys, was it um, was it Montana? Where that big standoff with the FBI happened? Those guys were all militia. And that's how it works. And the reason why none of those people went to jail is because they're protected by the Second Amendment. Now, if you go down there by yourself, if you think like, oh, this guy, you know, there's this training camp, there's this weird looking guy and he's always around weird kids and whatever, you know, if nobody else is going to step in there, I'm going to go down there by myself. Well, that's called vigilanteism and that's not allowed. That's not covered in the first, uh, the second amendment. But getting a group of friends together and declaring yourself militia, then you can. That's in our laws. I could go way deep into that, but I'm not going to. But what's what's the what what are the possible blowbacks of that particular story? If our government does not start paying attention to things that do matter and pay less attention to things that don't matter, right? And I could man, I, I got so many references going through my head right now. You're going to see an uprising in the people. And when we see that that a man tried to murder another guy with a bike lock and he gets to, to skate. Listen, there's 40 million people in California. I would say a good half of them are conservative, patriotic, gun-toting, 
Jesus loving folk. Eventually, those people are going to get pushed too far, and this is one of the this is one of the things that's going to push them. You're going to let that guy who tried to murder another guy, and we all saw it. You're going to let that guy go. Okay, then I guess I'm going to have to protect myself since you clearly won't. Right. So let's say the next time you know there's an Antifa thing in Berkeley or whatever. And some conservative shows up and he's packing. Because, by the way, you can actually carry a firearm in California. But they just have all these other weird laws around. Like, you can't have, uh, you can't have, um, you know, like a magazine in there. There's, there's all these weird laws. But what, what's going to happen? You know, one of these times, you know, there's going to be a clash. and Somebody's going to pull out a gun and somebody's going to get shot. That's going to happen. And it's most likely going to be, you know, just some conservative guy who's just meeting up with his friends to pray or whatever. And then guess what? Then there's going to be, then there's going to be a lawsuit. And then you are going to have the Jay Sekulow, you know, uh, legal foundation on that kid's side, battling on the grounds of the Second Amendment. Right? I mean, can you see like the progression of like how many different ways this thing can go? And it's and it all begins with with bloodshed. Eric Canton hit that guy with the bike lock. Bloodshed, right? It's the blood has already been drawn. There's therefore there's gonna be more bloodshed until this is resolved. Because letting that guy go, that's a declaration to the people of California that if you are a conservative, we are we are going to use the law uh, to allow people. To kill you. That's what that declares. So, fun times in America, folks. Hey, listen, I want to thank everybody for uh, you know tuning in and, and chiming in on yesterday's show. A um, couple of you kind of saw what I was trying to say, but man, there was a lot of folks that said a lot of really stupid things. And listen, don't don't. Don't think that just because somebody's proclaiming to be a conservative that they are. You go on to if you if you listen or read Reddit at all, you go on to the Donald or um, the Great Awakening or even the Tucker Carlson page, and it's like, man, you guys are not an open forum at all, right? You're just trying to push your one narrative, and that's you know they they shut me down for putting my podcast on their subreddit. Why? You don't you so, so when Miley Yiannopoulos puts his articles up, you don't you don't ban him. Oh well, no, because he's a respect. Yep. Yeah, okay. You know, like it's it's baffling to me how it's you know the story of the crabs in the bucket. You know, you put a bunch of crabs in the bucket, and like one of them tries to get out, and all the other crabs will grab onto him. And every and it just keeps going and going. Like none of the crabs can get out because all the other crabs will grab you. And that clearly happens on the left, but it's it it happens, I would say, just as much to the same extent on the right. Like you're if you're bashing other people that are on your side, you're hurting yourself. That's all you're doing. If you're censoring other people on your side, then you are silencing yourself. It's 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 an age old gaffe. And it's happening on the right, and it like it really breaks my heart because if you know if our country continues to slide into oblivion like it has been for the last couple of decades, it's going to be because of that. It's not going to be because of the leftists. They're weak. They're already defeated. If we get defeated, it's going to be because of us. Because we weren't strong. Because we weren't together. Damn it, people. Like If you don't come together, if you don't come together in community... And stop bashing other people. Stop, stop talking trash about other people. Right? Come together. Love your country. Embrace other people's ideas. Right? Listen to everything that's put in front of you. Like I said, man, trust all you want, but verify. Look into the facts. If you have an argument, make your argument. Don't be a shit talker. What are you, 12? Right? Got a, you got a bag of pizza pockets? Right? Sitting in front of your Nintendo drinking Pepsi? Is that who you are? You're some cave dweller in your mom's basement talking shit to people on the internet? What's wrong with you? Don't be that guy, man. Nobody likes that guy. Anyways. 
Thanks for supporting the show, yo. If you want to support the show, go into archadvocate.com and you can support the show there. But uh, don't forget, like, I mean, do hit subscribe and hit share and all that stuff. If you want to support the show financially, you can do Patreon or PayPal. It's on archadvocate.com. But do join the community. Come talk with us. Come talk with us, man. We'll, we'll talk to you. You know, just be civil. Don't be an asshole. All right. That's the show for today. You guys have a great weekend. Bye.